Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rejecting an offer by Hamas to release the more than 130 people still being held hostage by Hamas. Now, Hamas says it will free the hostages if Israel agrees to a ceasefire and withdraws its troops from Gaza. The Prime Minister says those conditions are unacceptable. He's also rejecting the so-called two-state solution for when the fighting ends. Netanyahu says an independent state for the Palestinians would undermine Israeli security. The Prime Minister also insisting over the weekend and that the fighting in Gaza will continue on all fronts. And that only adds to the growing concern that tensions in that region have reached a boiling point. Scripps News national correspondent Meg Hilling has more. With missile attacks in Lebanon and Syria. <laughs> and airstrikes between Pakistan and Iran. <laughs> Escalating tensions outside of Gaza and the Middle East have sparked global concern that the region is teetering on the brink of turmoil. Israel continues to clash with Iranian-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon, hitting a Lebanese army checkpoint Sunday with a deadly strike and injuring several more people, according to Lebanese state media. In Syria, a lethal Israeli airstrike on the country's capital destroyed a building used by the Iranian paramilitary Revolutionary Guard. With each strike, the possibility of a two-state solution is being called into question. But regardless of how popular it is, the reality on the ground is the two-state solution is dead. Something has to be done for the Palestinians. They've been abused. They've made into a, a weapon against Israel for 75 years now. That's, that hasn't gotten anywhere. But the idea that you're going to reconstruct Gaza and build a, a state on that, I, I think, uh, defies reality. Health officials say more than 25,000 people have been killed in Gaza since fighting broke out between Hamas-run Gaza and Israeli forces in October. In response, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu continues to remain firm in his rejection of calls for a ceasefire. Hamas in exchange for the release of our hostages, Hamas demands the end of the war, the withdrawal of our forces from Gaza, the release of all the murderers and rapists of the Nakba Hamas unit and leaving Hamas intact. If we agree to this, our warriors fell in vain. If we agree to this, we will not be able to guarantee the security of our citizens. We will not be able to return the evacuees safely to their homes, and the next October 7th will only be a matter of time. I am not ready to put up with such a fatal injury to Israel's security, so we will not agree to it. But it's not just Israel and its neighbors that are clashing. We are now at a moment where there is regional spillover in the Red Sea, in Lebanon, in Iraq, and even in Syria. <laughs> A series of airstrikes escalating tensions between Pakistan and Iran. On Saturday, a barrage of missiles on a U.S. military base in Iraq, unleashed by Iranian-backed militants, leaving an unknown number of U.S. service members injured, some being evaluated for brain injuries, according to U.S. Central Command. The European Union is gravely concerned uh, by the spiral of violence in the Middle East and beyond now also in South Asia. Global leaders now doubling down on demands that efforts be made to lower tensions in the region. If we wanted an end to all these escalations that are happening in, uh, in the region, the solution to that is for the international community to work together to end this war and to uh, go back to uh, the negotiation table and to talk about the peace process that is sustainable. In, in Palestinian territories and, uh, and Israel. With many believing the answer begins with resolving the situation in Gaza first. The key to de-escalation uh, in, uh, in general right now, I think, is ending the conflict in Gaza, because that's feeding all of this instability in the region. You know, we were already a, a very instable region, uh, unfortunately, before, but this continuing conflict and the continuing carnage that we're seeing, the, you know, we're now at 30,000 civilian dead uh, in Gaza. Uh, you know, we have to find a way to stop uh, this uh, crisis. We have to stop the killing in Gaza, and that will lay the ground, uh, I believe, for uh, stabilizing other situations in their uh, neighborhood. Meg Hilling, Scripps News.